The new Barbie movie is out and I thought we can do something different and fun today. My wife is super excited about the movie so I thought it would be fun to paint her into the Barbie world. So the first thing that I had to do was find good references. So I chose uh, this scene because it really resembles the Barbie persona and the Barbie world. A lot of the pink theme, the pink dress. And then of course I had to also find a couple of good references for my wife's uh, face so that I can combine them two into this, into this uh, illustration. Then I started sketching using these references. Sketching has never really been my strong area and I just usually have to trust the process. And usually when I start painting, things get a lot better. As you can f see here, the face is a bit weird and the facial expression is a bit weird. But I continued the sketch and I continued to draw knowing that the painting process will bring it all together. But it's important to make sure that I do spend the time in the, in the sketch and drawing phase. To make sure I put the important things there and the outlines and the, and the main shapes in, in, the, in the sketch phase so that it would be easier to paint and render afterwards. So using the selection tool I put the main colors in keeping in mind that everything should be on a different layer. For example the skin was on one layer, the dress was on another, the hair was on another and then when it came to the background I also made them on different layers. And part of the reason is that so that when things are on different layers, it's easy to adjust them at the beginning. If I wanted to adjust the saturation, the color, or change the color, it would be much easier to do. And as you can see here, the character first had blonde hair, but then I decided to change it and make it match more with uh, my wife's hair. And because the hair was on a different layer, it was very easy for me to select that layer and just change the color quickly and right away into a darker hair. So now that I had everything masked and everything in a different layer and have the main colors in, I just had to start creating clipping masks on each layer that I wanted to work on and then start rendering that, that layer. And the reason for creating the clipping mask is that I only can render and paint over that selected area and I cannot really go outside it so it makes the rendering process a lot easier. So as I was painting the face, I kept thinking, trust the process, trust the process, because this doesn't really look good at all. But I kept on rendering the different planes of the face and just added a bit of color variation. And really the important thing was to always think about where the light is coming from and then add the big light and shadow shapes first and then slowly start adding more and more details and render more and more. There were a few things that I was thinking about when adding the colors and rendering. The first thing was that I should keep the colors a little bit more saturated because of the theme and the world. So the colors need to be a bit vibrant and the saturation needs to be a bit more to give that feel of that world. And then the second thing that I thought about was to add more highlights than usual to the skin to give it that feel of it being somewhere between reality and the, and the Barbie world. So it has a lot of reflection in the skin. Then moving on to the dress, uh, as you can see the dress had a pattern, so the way I decided to do it first was uh, to paint the entire thing pink first as I did before, then add the main light and shadow shapes in first. Then using the overlay mode I just selected a really light closer to white color and then added the pattern by just painting vertical and horizontal lines. But then I realized as I did this, it really removed a lot of my shadow ships that I had already put in. So I went back and added a multiply layer and added those shadows in on top of the pattern, pattern layer. Then moving on to hair, there's no need to work on every individual hair and it really makes the painting look odd when you do that. So the best thing to do is start with big shapes again. and. With the hair, I added areas that are darker and areas that are lighter using a bigger brush. So there's no need to go small and small and start uh, painting every single hair strand. And then once I had some really darker and lighter shapes in, using the color picker, you can just choose those colors again and then kind of push the shadow and the light shapes in different directions and let them kind of merge or get into each other. And this gives the really good feel for the hair that we see. Then once you have the big shapes done, I reduced the brush size and added some details and made some extra hair strands that kind of stick out of or out of the big shape and really give it that flowy feel. 
Now there's something easy to do to make your painting pop a little bit more and that's using a, a rim light. So easy way to do it is just create a new layer, put it on hard light mode and then clip it to your character's painting and then on the one side that you can think of where the light is from behind for example, you can add a, add a rim light. And the rim light helps kind of separate your character from the background a little bit more and gives that really nice and cool feeling to your painting or to your character. I forgot to add the necklace here so I went back and created a new layer and just really simply just created uh, rough shapes for, for the necklace and added it in there. And keep in mind that some of these things, because they're so small when compared to the overall painting, you don't really need to spend too much time adding too many details. Now, something that I see a lot of people do as a mistake where then the jewelry looks out of place and out of shape is you forget to add the shadows that it leaves on the skin. So it's important to go back and look at the light, where the light is coming from, and then just add the shadow shapes on the skin that is caused by the necklace or the by, by the jewelry, and it really places it and makes the, makes the necklace cohesive and goes well with the painting. Now, when it came to the background, uh, I followed the same principles because everything was on a different layer. It was easy to make adjustments and just render it more and more. Again, always big brush strokes first and then small brush strokes after. And then it's important to just keep in mind to add some color variations in different areas. For example, the grass here, it's not all just green. So there's different, uh, different color variations of green closer to yellow and a little bit closer to darker green and such. And it really adds that, um, that interesting feel and makes it, makes it look more, uh, more appealing. So now after everything was done, I made some small adjustments to some of the layers and then just uh, merge all the layers for the character into one layer and then all the layers of the background into another layer. And then when it came to the background, when I merged the layers, I made sure that the other layers were still visible. And the reason for this, then I went and added a bit of a blur to the layer that I merged and then erased the parts that are in the forefront so that those parts are not blurred out. So just the background is, is blurred. So keep in mind that when you're doing things like that uh, and adding blur, you keep in mind what is in the background, what is in the foreground, so that not everything gets the same amount of blur. And then something else that I noticed was that the skin was a bit too dark. I wanted to change the skin color, but because everything was already merged and did a lot of adjustments already, I didn't want to go back to the skin layer alone and just make adjustments there. So in order to just select the skin, you can manually just select it or the other option is to use the color range selection tool. It helps you select the majority of the skin and then you can use the manual selection to add more. And then using the curve tool and the color balance tool and the hue saturation tools, I was able to adjust the color of the skin uh, separately. And then also at the end, I realized the eyelashes were missing. So I went back and added that and finished the painting that way. Here we go. And this is the process of me trying to paint my wife into the Barbie world. I hope you like this video and see you in the next one.